start where you stand. Do what you can. Even if that means writing your name in the sand. And that's your work of art for the day. See, not everyone's blessed with parents that'll pay for their tuition to art school. Not everyone's blessed with parents that'll pay for their equipment and tools to start a project. While some people are, and that's just the reality of the world. Some people are more advantaged. Some people are more disadvantaged. But it's not really about that. It's more about the perspective and your attitude to what is given or to what is not given to you. So start where you stand with your work. If you're just starting a new craft, don't wait for you know the top quality equipment that you need. You know, start with what you have around you. All you really need is your mind and a healthy body to get the ball rolling, to gain momentum. You just need that first push. And sometimes it helps to have people around you to give that ball a push down the hill. Because once that ball starts rolling, it gains momentum and it's and it gains speed. And it's hard to stop once you know it really starts going. And sometimes you won't have people to give you that extra push. Sometimes you need to just find it within yourself and know know that you have yourself the inner strength to get a project going and take the first few steps and the momentum will come and once you've done it once you know you can do it again once you finish one project you know that you can start a new one and see it through because you've done it before gaining confidence in yourself gaining confidence in your abilities but first you've got to start where you stand and just use what's around you use the inspiration that's around you so before I started this video a thought came to mind about starting where you stand as far as trying to change the world you know starting with yourself before going out in the world and trying to change other people, trying to change the politics, trying to change, you know, the, the outside environment, but starting with yourself first, starting where you stand, maybe even starting where you sleep, you know, starting to clean your bedroom up, fix your bed in the morning. You know, how can we try and clean the world up and fix the world with all its problems? Or we can't even fix, you know, fix our bed up in the morning. So starting where you stand isn't just about creative projects and just using the tools that you have around you. But starting where you stand and starting with yourself to fix yourself and get yourself in order. In order to get the world in order. And something else I just want to talk about is not waiting for permission to start a project as well. You know, not waiting for permission to even get your life together. Sometimes we look to other people to, you know, for social validation, to get, you know, projects going. We want to tell our family and our friends, you know, what do you think about this idea? What do you think about this that I'm doing right now? And getting other people's thoughts about it. But at the end of the day, the more self-aware that you are about what you're doing, the less validation that you need from others because you're following your intuition and that's what comes from being self-aware is understanding yourself and knowing yourself and the thoughts that come up in your own mind and the inspiration that comes up and you following that inspiration and letting it lead you to a place where you need to go. Um... When I first started a lot of my creative projects in the past, some of them, I went to other people and I said, you know, what do you think about this? And I guess part of being human is that we're social beings and we like to connect and to get other people's approval. But I think sometimes that can hold people back um, as far as, 
you know, people waiting around to get the acceptance of others. So, you know, the more in touch you are with yourself and what you want from this life, the less validation you need from others. So don't wait around too long and just get going. You know, the more you put on hold the projects that you want to do, the more time you spend thinking about it on why it might not work or how difficult it might be is the less time you have to creating a solution to the problem that you are trying to solve with your project. And, you know, as far as self-awareness goes as well, the more self-aware we are, the more genuine we can be in our works of art, in our creativity, the ideas that we express, the interests, vibrations and the sounds, the context of our art and the concepts that we come up with. The more self-aware we are within ourselves, the more clarity we have in our art. So, you know, be yourself when it comes to your creativity. Be genuine because people can feel that you're being genuine and, you know, being genuine is a vibration. Being fake is a vibration. And being, you know, social beings, I think we have learned through our years growing up that we can sense when people are being fake and people are being genuine because we deal with manipulation we deal with realness every single day from the world around us so it's something that is built in our intuition so the more genuine genuine you are within your art the more people can sense that and the more people can resonate with your work because you're coming from a, a real place with clarity and people can feel that and they can vibe with you with your art because if you're being fake and you're coming from a a place of you know not being genuine and doing something because it's the latest trend or it's something that'll be hot something that'll bring you clout and it'll be you know the next topic um people will be able to feel that and um you know, you got to question yourself when you are coming with those ideas. And I guess that, that goes back to self-awareness is about questioning yourself and asking the questions, the inner dialogue about why you're interested in certain subjects, why you're writing these lyrics, why your paintings look the way they do. And I think it's, I think through art, um, it's important that we find our, ourselves in our art it's a reflection of ourselves so we can see where we're coming from so as far as self-awareness goes and self-knowledge it's about you know like I said before asking the questions looking at your past what made you who you are from your childhood the experiences that you had looking at the present moment and where you're at you know what brought you to this moment what makes you think the way you do and why you're in the environment that you're in and looking to the future asking yourself what you want from the future where you want to be and what atmosphere you want to be in in the future study yourself study you know just like I said the past present and future study your environment study your family because you know they're they indirectly influence you from a very young age Actually, I won't even say indirectly. A lot of the times it is directly. Um, You know, as we grow up, we look to our parents and siblings and elders for ways of living in this this world. You know, our morals, our um, ways of speaking and, you know, the culture. So study yourself and the more in tune you are with yourself, the more clear you can be with the type of art that you're trying to express. And when it comes to being genuine with yourself as well, you know, it's fine to look to others for inspiration and look to others for, you know, different styles and techniques, different sounds and things that we can resonate with. But I think there's a fine line between completely biting someone's style and being inspired by them and flipping it and creating your own substance from it. 
So tweak other people's style to your own. I, um, I remember reading quotes, you know, about that nothing is ever really original. It's just been copied and twisted and flipped so many times through history that it's become its own thing, you know. So hip hop started off um, at its very beginnings. And then through the years, people looked back at the history, heard certain rhymes, heard, heard certain flows and beats and productions and took that inspiration and flipped it into their own, um, in their own genuine way, which comes from, you know, knowing yourself, what vibration you want to bring and what vibration you want to be in. So also listen to, listen to the feedback from other people. Um, especially all, di all different types of people, I think it's important to get their feedback. People that you're close to that can give you real feedback. People that are not close to you that can also give you real feedback because they don't have their emotions um, in between the feedback. They can just give it to you straightforward. If you're a, you know, a musician, for example, as well, I think it's important to show your art to people that don't have the musical ear or if you're a painter that don't have the you know the painter's eye to attention to detail so giving your work to different types of people for feedback and then they can give you that those um those opinions that they have and you can observe it listen to it be detached from it you know don't take it too seriously their feedback you know whether it's good or bad because at the end of the day if you feel like you're happy with your work of art that's all that matters and I guess we could go even deep into this but the reasons why you make art is it for yourself or is it for others so that goes back to you know self-awareness and knowing why you do what you do and what you want from what you do so and art is also an experience of getting to know yourself like I said before, you know, the art that you put out is going to be a reflection of you. And through the process of making art, you'll get to understand more about yourself as you put your ideas down and you can see, all right, I'm writing a lot about this. This must be taking a lot of space in my mind um, at the moment. So, yeah, these are just some some thoughts that I've had um, about being yourself and being more genuine. I think um, as the years go by with my artistry, within music and within photography, you know, I've been able to strip back a lot of layers um, as, far about, as far as what I'm trying to express within my art. I only started rapping when I was 22 years old. I'm 27 now and sometimes I think to myself if I had started rapping when I was 16, 15, you know, like a lot of artists usually do, how would my sound and lyrics that I write back then be so different to what I write right now because I've matured so much since I was, you know, 18 when I was, since, since I was younger. The maturity that I have now is no way in comparison to you know, what I didn't have back then when I was younger, you know, I, I could have been writing a lot of lyrics about being in a club, you know, drinking alcohol, all about girls, and don't get me wrong, you know, I do have hints of that in my lyrics, but yeah, sometimes I just think about if I had started hip-hop earlier, I know my message would have been way different to what it is now, and everything happens for a reason, you know, me starting hip-hop like at a later age, um, some might think that's a disadvantage, um, but there's always two sides to the coin, the yin and the yang, the good and the bad. The bad might be that I don't have that younger experience, maybe on stage or with the um, experience of writing and getting onto the mic, but I see the positives as being being able to express a more meaningful message now that I've matured so much um through these years and yeah that's just the way i've seen my journey so far and i'm grateful for starting at an older age and being able to tackle all the obstacles um 
hip hop has thrown at me starting at an older age. You know, some might not think it's possible to do starting to rap at an older age of 22, which is in hindsight not really old at all. Even 20 and 27 now, I really don't think it's that old talking to older people who are in their 30s and 40s still doing hip hop. Um, and it's funny though because I, I think there's a, st a stereotype and a stigma against starting rap at an older age, like it's a young man's sport. I guess it's a young man's sport within the musical music industry, um, but with hip hop away from the music industry, it's just another art form. Um, and a lot of painters start at a late age. I think Van Gogh started painting in his 30s and became one of the most well-known painters um, in the world today so yeah that, those are just some thoughts on um, on that so being at a older age I can definitely say that my art is coming from a more genuine place and a more pure place without any um, what would I say more, any I guess agendas that I would have not been aware of when I was younger had I started hip hop at that age. So everything happens for a reason. Um, and you just got to look at your artistic journey and see both sides of the coin, the disadvantages and the advantages of your journey and try and lean one more, lean one way to the advantages as much as you can and limit the disadvantages and flip the disadvantages to advantages whichever way that might be. And I'm sure you can find it because I know I found it within my journey. It just takes a bit of contemplation and thinking. So, yeah. Start where you stand as far as, you know, getting a creative um, project going and building skills within yourself. Start where you stand as far as changing yourself to change the world because the world is really just a reflection of yourself of your thoughts and your ideas and the way you interact with the world you know so if you want to live in a happy peaceful place you need to start inside of you and be be yourself within your art um because there's no one like you there's no one like me there's no one that sounds like you and there's no one that sounds like me so study yourself and get close to yourself